how to do data profiling. There are several ways to do it. They range from using Excel to using software to using tools available in the market. Through all these options, data profiling tasks can be automated to gain valuable insights into your data sets. In this lecture, let's understand how to profile data using Microsoft Excel. Excel has a free add-in called Power Query for preparing and transforming data. With this powerful option, you can get data from sources using a graphical interface and apply transformations using a Power Query editor. This includes some of the data profiling features. After all, how can you clean and prepare the data if you don't understand what makes it dirty? With that being said, data profiling is somewhat off the beaten path in the Power Query editor. Let's navigate through Excel to view the Power Query editor option. Head to the data tab, click from table slash range option to view the Power Query editor. So this is the one that we are talking about. Here, head to view tab. This data preview grouping is the one that is responsible for all the data profiling actions. Let's see what it looks like toggling between each of these five options. Start by checking the first two options. Mono spaced and show white space will change the appearance of the data in the Power Query Editor. Let's see. Mono spaced will render the data as fixed width text. Show white space will show any leading spaces in the data. Check the next two options, column quality and column distribution. You'll see a box appear above each column showing the percentage of records which are valid, error, and empty along with the distribution of values. So what is the importance of each of these characteristics? Transaction ID, transaction date, time, customer email, all of these columns are 100% valid. As there is no error, no empty values, let's look at all the other columns if there are any deviations. Column city, 4% empty values are there. So here is the one. As there is a null value that exists in the column city, it shows 4% of the total values are empty. What is the significance of the distribution then? It gives a sense of different values and frequency at which they exist within that column. By visualizing the distribution, you can quickly spot outliers that might further need investigation. You can check if the data falls within the expected range. This helps identify data quality issues. Power Query is providing distribution insights in terms of distinct and unique counts. For instance, transaction ID. It has 26 distinct values and 25 unique values. What is the difference between distinct and unique here? Distinct represents it is different values, but that doesn't mean those values are not repeated. They are repeated. So out of total values, 96% are distinct and 92% are unique. They never repeated. Let's look at other columns, quantity and city. Quantity has four distinct and zero unique count, while city has seven distinct values and one unique value. For more clear and easier understanding, let's discard these changes and go back to Excel so it would be easier for you to figure out the difference between the terms distinct and unique. Let me close it, discard it for now. Let me filter out quantity. Quantity, remember, four distinct and zero unique. So four distinct, there is no unique value while city has seven distinct and one unique value. What is that unique value? Cincinnati is repeated. The null value that it represented, that it is talking about one unique value. Since it is not repeated, it is showing under unique value. Whereas rest all are distinct, but repeating. So that's the difference between distinct and unique. Now let's recreate the Power Query Editor page. Remember, data from table and range. Back to Power Query Editor. One important thing to note here. See, you are seeing column stats at the bottom of the Power Query Editor page. 10 columns and 27 rows. Column profiling based on top 1000 rows. Here's an option to switch to column profiling based on entire data set 
or top thousand rows for my data set it doesn't make any difference because anyways the number of rows i have taken are less than 1000 but if you profile on more than 1000 rows remember to select the other option because by default the first one will be checked so that is about the details of the profiling option using the simple excel power query table dot profile select your table name table one here entering this would generate a consolidated profiling report let's close and load if you see here these are all the columns what is the minimum value, maximum value, average, standard deviation, row count, null count, distinct count. So this is the simple yet powerful way of generating a profiling report using Excel. With this, we have completed step one, that is discovering data quality requirements with our profiling stats. In our next lecture, we'll move to step two, defining the data quality requirements through data quality rules.